With 5.4 million crimes recorded in England and Wales in March 2021, what more must be done to tackle crime in Britain? Well, I think the first thing is that we need sufficient police officers to actually deter people committing crime, but also provide a reassuring presence within communities. So um, sufficient numbers are, are important. I'm pleased to see the, the government are recruiting uh, some 20,000 more police officers. Uh, and that's going to be important in terms of reducing crime, providing reassurance. But of course, then what's important is what the police officers do. Uh, it's important that in order to be effective, that they're visible, that they focus on tackling those problems that concern people most, tackling violent and violent crime, providing a reassuring presence so women can walk the streets uh, safely and that um, they solve local problems. So that's, mm. that's going to be important, it, actually local problem solving. And that's something I did when I was in Kent and a chief constable is we had problem solving teams that would focus on tackling those problems that were concerned to particular communities rather than just officers patrolling in the streets or driving around in police cars. Uh, they were focused on solving local problems. Do you believe such policing methods as stop and search successfully tackle crime or do they stereotype young black people? Stop and search is one tactic and it's a police tactic amongst many other tactics. And clearly stop and search is needed if people are carrying um, vicious Bowie knives around the streets. Um, it's important that the police officers stop those people and take those knives off them. But it's also important that the police officers use their powers fairly and properly and not disproportionately against one section of the community. Um, but my experience is that in tackling gun crime in London, for example, uh, that we didn't use stop and search and didn't rely on that. We um, very much um, carried out intelligence-led operations, intelligence-led stops, where the people we stopped and searched, we knew they were carrying weapons because people within the communities had told us. So if you work closely with communities, you can actually be far more effective because generally in stop and search, the vast majority of people, some 80%, are totally innocent of any crime. And so you're inconveniencing them and often alienating the very people you want to actually help you in tackling those crime problems. Definitely, and the nature of stop and search, because I, I, I guess it's on the streets as it happens, the police have to make a judgment of someone and think to themselves, is this person carrying a weapon or, or are they not? And that's going to inherently involve bias in some way. Yeah, well, I think the, if the officers are making a judgment, it's a case of how that judgment is made. And if it's made purely on the basis of somebody's race, then mm -hmm. yes, inevitably they're, 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 there's bias and the power is not being used properly and fairly. Uh, if it's made on the basis of intelligence and the officers and it's genuine intelligence, um, then that's different. And you, the police are actually gonna be more effective at, at their job. So if somebody's carrying a big uh, vicious knife, a zombie knife, as, as, as people do, and some people carry knives, um, some young people carry knives out of fear, then, um, then, then, then the power is very important and, and the communities would expect the police to stop those people and take those knives off them. So the main thing is it's used properly and fairly and, and, and the people who are stopped and searched are treated with respect. So what must businesses do this October to recognise Black History Month? I think businesses should celebrate Black History Month and recognise the contribution that Black people have made to this country. And it's that one time in the year where we celebrate the success, the, the valuable, invaluable contribution that Black people have made to the success of this country. And that um, it's important that Black people feel included and part of this country and their contribution is recognised and valued. Mm. Definitely. And so how would you recommend then that businesses go about doing that, whether externally, say on their social channels or through marketing and internally within their company? Um, I think there's lots of ways it can be celebrated. Um, I think the main thing is there's public recognition within that business that it is Black History Month. Um, it, it can be celebrated in the terms of cultural events, 
um, just acknowledging the fact that it is Black History Month in some way publicly within the company and um, making sure that um, the contribution from any black staff is, is, is valued and seen to be valued by that company. And outside of October, how can businesses continue to tackle workplace bias and prejudice? Well, I, I think the, the thing that businesses need to do is they need to focus on fairness and fair treatment of everybody, whoever they are, whatever colour they are, whichever their sexual orientation. The, the important thing is, is fairness. And I find I've run two organisations and I found that um, by focusing on fairness and fair treatment of everybody, that nobody objects to that. I mean, everybody wants to be treated fairly and nobody objects to that. And when you do that, you actually make everybody feel included and part of that organization and it's actually highly motivating you know when you have that feeling of inclusion and and belonging and and your contribution to that company um your views uh, are, are actually listened to and uh, responded to as as well you feel part of that organization and highly motivated and certainly the last two organizations i ran when i managed to actually build that environment it, both both organisations became very, very successful and, and mm. its performance improved exponentially.